Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about aperture priority for your X-T30. Now, if you already know what aperture priority is, then this is probably not the video for you. This is a beginner's guide for anybody who's just trying to get into photography or videography. Now, the simplest way that I can define aperture priority, it basically allows you to control how much of your image is in focus. And the easiest way to explain that is to actually just show you an image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on these lights lights so I went ahead and turned on the warehouse lighting and as you can see it's not very good for video it definitely gives you a yellow cast but it does give me a lot more light so that I can take some pictures so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to take a picture of these headphones that are right in front of me and I'm going to do it in f 2.8 and then I'm going to take one at f8 so here is the first picture at f 2.8 and then I'm going to take the second picture at f8 now if you look at both of these images the first one taken at f2.8 the background is much more blurrier sometimes it's called bokeh you can definitely read up on that there is many definitions to bokeh nowadays just find one that you like and just stick with it but at f8 you can clearly see that more of the background is in focus now as for what aperture you want to use for photography that's entirely up to you it's definitely something that you're going to have to experiment with what I would recommend is taking a bunch of photos at f2.8 and then taking the same photo at f8 and figure out what your style is and what you actually like in your photography that's really the best way to do it so let's now go ahead and actually get into how to set up your camera to go to aperture priority right here on the left hand side you'll notice that we have a mode dial right now we have it in single mode for photography so we'll just leave it there on the other side we have the shutter speed and what you want to do is you want to put it in the a for automatic when we move over to the lens itself if you have a switch like this you want it to be on the non a side so in other words this would be automatic if we switch it down this will be manual so this is going to be a picture of the aperture itself and what this will allow us to do is control the aperture of the lens manually which is what we want for aperture priority now on some of the cheaper Fuji lenses like this 15 to 45 here in order to get into aperture priority mode you're going to have to do it through the front command dial up here and through the screen so let's go ahead and get started with that so once we have the camera on, you'll notice that we are in one of the auto ISO modes. There's actually three different auto ISOs that I can actually go into for the X-T30, and I have it set up differently. Once you go below ISO A1, you're actually going to be able to control the ISO manually, and that's not what you want to do if you want to be in aperture priority. You want to be in one of the auto modes. So that is great. What we want to do is we want to go up front here, and we want to push in on the command dial. And by pushing in on the command dial, we can actually switch between changing ISO or changing aperture. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way to the left. And what this number represents is that I'm actually manually setting the aperture. So you always want to have this number present when you want to be in aperture priority. Now, I just want to make it perfectly clear on lenses in which you don't have an aperture ring, you're going to have to use the front command dial in order to change the aperture. But on the XF lenses, on some of the premier lenses, in fact, most of the premium lenses, you're going to have an aperture ring. So you're going to be able to control the aperture of your lens through this ring right here. You will not need to control it through the command dial. And I'll just demo this very quickly for you. So you can go ahead and turn it on. You'll notice that it's at F8 right now, and I can just go ahead and I can just twist this ring, and you'll notice that it's actually changing the aperture. So this is definitely the more preferred way for most people to actually use the Fuji lenses. It's to buy the lenses that actually have an aperture ring, which is going to be all of the premium lenses. So just to let you know, there are some lenses in the lineup that doesn't have aperture rings. It's usually the more cost-effective ones, but any of the really good lenses will have an aperture ring. But right now we are set in aperture priority because the shutter is in A, we have auto ISO dialed up, and we have a manual setting from our aperture. So we are in aperture priority mode. Now let's go ahead and go into some of the menu settings because there is a couple of things that you do want to be aware of when you're in aperture priority. So the first thing that we want to be looking at is in the camera icon and we want to find the ISO and you'll notice that we are in auto 2 right now. If I scroll down, you'll notice that there are three auto settings, which is really important because it's going to allow you to adjust some really important settings when you're in aperture priority. Now, these are my recommendations, but you can definitely play with them. 
For ISO Auto 2, what I would recommend the default sensitivity to be set at 160, which is the lowest number, which generally means it's going to actually give you the best image quality, so you definitely want that set. The maximum ISO, this is going to be how far up you want. Generally speaking, most people have it set to 3200. I am pretty comfortable with 6400. It still gives a really good image, but just keep in mind that the further up you go, the more grainy your image is going to be as you climb in ISO. The minimum shutter speed is the most important setting here, and the reason why I say this is because it will not fall below 1 60th of a second when it's actually trying to expose a proper image. And this is important because when I use Auto 2, I'm using it with prime lenses. In other words, when I don't have optical image stabilization, I don't want to fall below 1 60th of a second because I'm going to start getting blurry images if I fall below that. That is my limit for getting sharp images, so I don't really want to fall below that. Now, if I go to ISO 3, what you'll notice is that I have the same settings for the first two, 160, 6400, but I have 130 of a second. In other words, if I'm using a lens that has optical image stabilization, I am very comfortable with going to 130 of a second and still being able to get a sharp image. Some people can actually go lower than that, but for such a small camera like the X-T30, I like to keep it at 130 of a second because in general, I'm going to be getting very sharp images for an optically stabilized lens. So this is what's important to me when I switch between Auto 2 and Auto 3. Auto 1 is basically a safe setting for getting the highest image quality, but I very rarely use that setting. There is already a bunch of good videos out there talking about the technical aspects of aperture priority. I just recommend going ahead and just watching those videos because they're going to explain it way better than I do. And I recommend you just go out there, shoot a bunch of photos or shoot a bunch of videos and then learn on your own, find your own style and have some fun doing it. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, definitely leave it below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.